George Bruno with the 21 Report. We are at the 21 Summit in Orlando, Florida. The year is 2020. This is a big year. And I'm having a talk with Coach Greg Adams. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, George. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Your first time first at the time. 21 Convention. Tell me yeah. what you think. Well, it's good to see it in person. I'm just glad I got to see it in person. I've heard about it for about three or four years. And I always had an idea of what it was until I got here and saw it. And you can see the people in the audience. You see the men that are here committed to listening to other content creators, give their message. You get to see them relate to you. Hey, I watch you on YouTube. And you see the man behind the screen. I mean, it's just changed my idea of what the conference is. The professionalism, the staff, the way everything is organized. Yeah. It's given me a different perspective about this particular idea and I'm ready to put some more fire into it. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't take very long for you to just be one of the guys here. Like Yeah. You are now one of the guys. Right. One of the team here. And the way that I know that is I'm looking at how the attendees are responding to you. Yeah. You can't even walk out there without being surrounded right by guys right that means your message is important sometimes you don't get it you know you're looking at numbers half yeah. the time oh i got this many comments this many subscribers so that's how you're evaluating your message if you have a book you're looking at how many they sold but not until you meet somebody in person that says i know you and i watch you yeah. and they can recognize you just walking down the hallway it gives you a different perspective on the value you're presenting to these to the people. And not only that, I look at even the content creators, even the people that have big personalities. Even if you don't agree 100% with what they say, there's a mutual respect across the board yes. for everyone, and that's important. Everyone understands what we're doing, why we're doing it. So you put all of that behind you, and you don't bring any of that up. No one's kind of confronting each other or arguing and saying, I'm right about this. Everybody has a mutual respect for the next man. So that's encouraging, and it encourages you to keep going yeah. and doing what you do. What would you say your main message is this weekend? Right. Well, I had an opportunity to talk twice so far, and I'm going to talk one more time to the to the ladies tomorrow. That's right. You're on three stages. Three stages. Wow. Yeah. So it's been a lot of work. I, I do all of this. We do the dinners, and then I stay up until it's midnight here uh, where we are, but it's early uh, nighttime in, in California time, but the first two messages I got to talk about the free agent lifestyle. So that is basically the encompassing message of what I talk about. That's the book that I wrote. And I got to describe it of how I got there. Not necessarily what's in the book, but why I wrote the book. And a lot of guys can relate. You either been divorced, you had bad breakups, you're dealing with children, and a lot of guys can relate to that. So I got to introduce them to that. And then the next talk was directly to father. So that was the patriarch. And the idea was that there's a system that is designed to remove the masculine uh, man from the home. All right. What are the consequences of that? So you're talking to a dynamic group of men, divorce, divorced fathers, men who want to have kids. And there were people in the audience that I was trying to relate that message to and that could understand it on that level. So amazing opportunity to be able to talk to these people about it and a lot of people gave me great feedback from it it's great typically your message is for men yep that's pretty much who your audience is but you're going to be speaking to women right soon what do you have in store for the ladies well i'm going to talk about the femininity the lack of femininity and the presence of femininity in men Okay, we're going to talk about how they deal with femininity because in our society now, femininity in men is celebrated and for femininity in women, they don't want it. So the roles are actually switching a little bit and we're going to talk about the confusion and chaos that's created from that and why we are now, most there's more single women than ever. There's less married people. There's the, the birth rates declining. So I'm going to try to put a context on that and talk about how we're basically causing confusion, but the reason why we're doing it is for our own selfish needs of resources here. So I'm going to put that message into play. 
I'm also going to talk about the book that I wrote about feminism. And uh, we're going to talk about why we got here. I, it's, it's interesting to me, to tell you the truth, there's a group of women here that are looking for a message and they're coming to these particular groups of men forward. I think that's phenomenal for them to take that step and they're willing to be open-minded and listen and take something from it. I don't know what they'll take from it, but they'll take something. I think you're gonna get a few amens in there, to the, be honest with right, you. Right. Uh, a lot of men say there's no good women out there, but from a woman's perspective, when a woman looks at her prospects in the men's community, right. the fact that you said that many men are being feminine, right. and that's being celebrated, yeah. that's gotta grieve a woman. They don't want that. I mean, you would think they would want that. That's what the media is pushing. Politicians are pushing. The, the great narrative is that they want men to show their feminine side. You know, uh, they want them to be emotional, express themselves. Yeah, that might work once or twice, but that's not what they need. They need a rock. Most women are looking for rocks. They're looking for strong men. After a while, you keep presenting that presence, that feminine presence to her, she's gonna lose respect for you. And this is the dilemma overall that women have. Unfortunately though, it's kind of like playing both sides of the coin. They're getting the benefits of men's femininity, right? You're okay, you don't want to be competitive in the workplace. We'll take those jobs. And they are stepping up for those resources. So we're at a really critical crossroads in, in gender dynamics. However, this group of women are saying, we got to figure this out and they're willing to listen. Yeah. yeah. You have a couple books. The first one is Free Agent Lifestyle. Yep. And you have a recent book called? De-Evolution. De-Evolution. Right. Tell it, us about it's that. It's basically um, the America's reverse engineering of American women. All right, so what feminism is, is basically the reverse engineering of American women. There's a lot of celebration of feminism, and of course, Women are in the workplace now, they're competing, they're making more money. They now make up the vast, the majority of the uh, employed workers in the United States by 51%. But the reality is there's been a scoreboard of feminism that they're not revealing, okay? There's been a lot of things that have come, um, basically not good results from it, but you're not gonna hear it unless people dig out that information and I spend a great amount of that book, digging out that information and presenting it, a lot of people don't like to accept the information. And that's a critical word. They don't wanna accept that that's a byproduct of feminism. But I believe in cause and effect. I believe in an equal and opposite reaction to everything. Mm -hmm. So whatever positives you got, you certainly are gonna get, gonna get negatives. People just have to accept those negatives. If you don't wanna accept the negatives, and place blame on other things, well then you're not accepting the full you know, weight of feminism. So I, that's, the, that's what the book's about. What is the price that com the community right. has to pay for that? The community at large you yes. mean in, in the world? Yeah. There's a critical price because you gotta say, you, know, you remove uh, both parents from the household, there's gonna be a result to that. I mean, I think the kids, gonna, the kids are suffering as a result mm of the gains that are made. And then not only that, men get disenfranchised just a bit in the workplace, those job. Listen, when you bring in additional workers, there's not additional jobs. You just brought in additional workers, right? So if women fill jobs, that means men lost some jobs. Now there's a balance. You gotta accept the balance. And then as a result, you're gonna say, well, we're all the good men. Well, a couple of them got disenfranchised or displaced, okay? Not only that, you look at the family structure, as a result of both people leaving the homes, kids suffered a little bit. The grades are down, performances are down, kids are more obese, they're less productive. How do we deal with that? Who's gonna deal with it? We obviously, the school's not dealing with it well. Are the parents willing to take on that responsibility or are we gonna just point fingers? Right now we're pointing fingers. Men aren't strong enough, women are too aggressive, and we can't meet in the middle. Wow. Until we, until we really take responsibility for the cause and effect, the good parts of feminism and the negative parts, we're not gonna get anywhere. Do you think you're gonna end up with some female followers after this weekend? We could, I met a couple in the hallway that said they've been following me for a long time. 
and it was like you know one of those who would have thought yeah right? it was kind of like yeah you know yeah sometimes i i look at the analytics and i say well there's females following me you know a good mm -hmm. six to ten percent mm -hmm. of the audience but there were women who knew me they knew video titles they said i commented on this video and i'm like it's incredible to think that they're engaging with you along with the men that are engaging with you and they're contributing and they're investing in you. Mm -hmm. So when you think about that, you know, you don't want to really cater the message to them, but they like the message where it is. So they're saying, we agree with it. Let's continue forward in this. Maybe they want to change. I love it. Yep. I love it. Yep. If people want to find out more information, where can they go? First thing to go, I, YouTube is the biggest platform. If they go to my YouTube channel, in the description box, there's a lot of places where I t send people. But if they have some problems, they can go to my website, gregadams1.com, and they'll be able to find everything there. They can direct me to, direct to the books, they can direct to all the YouTube channels, apparel, and all of that stuff. Yep. I know the title, Coach Greg Adams, originally started with you being a coach, literally yep. a sports coach. Yep. Are you a coach now? Do you coach men one-to-one? -one? I do coach men one-to-one, -one, so mm -hmm. people do reach out to me. I have a, pl I have a place where they can reach out to me. Uh, they usually do that through my YouTube. And what happens is, you know, I was a basketball coach before that, and I coached women, all right? I coached them for 16 years. Mm -hmm. Now I'm coaching men, and I'm directing them, using the information that I learned being around women like almost 24-7. And now I'm saying, well, this is how I can help you out. Maybe I can change the direction of your life for providing you one bit of detail that you might not be thinking about. Yeah. So it's a beautiful thing, man. I like that. What does 2021 have in store for Coach Greg Adams? What do you think? Well, hopefully we can get back to moving around the country a little bit, yeah. maybe moving around the world. And that is basically the free agent lifestyle. It's not sitting at home, you know, I want to get out and move. Uh, yeah. Fortunately, I've been able to make some good connections with people like you, Anthony, uh, that wasn't available to me early in 2020. Now we have that, hopefully we can build on that. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I might write a third book, who knows, mm -hmm. all right? But I want to continue building the audience that I am. The numbers are going up daily. Yeah. So I say, they, they're here for a reason. I'll keep giving them confidence. I'm watching you grow and I'm watching your social media just get deeper and wider yeah. on a daily basis. And you are a lean, mean content machine. <laughs> you just, you're, I just look at my phone and like, there's another video. It's like, how in yeah, the man. world do you go at this pace? It's amazing. It's crazy. I think what happens is I've learned how to do uh, scheduling very well. So I use these schedulers and then I spend half of two or three days recording. Mm -hmm. And then I schedule the post. So there's a lot of things going on. And now I'm at the point. Now I have to hire someone. All right. So I've been doing this for two years. And the audience has grown so crazy that I now have to bring someone in to manage just a little bit. Yeah. 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 Well, this is completely amazing. I'm glad that we met face to face. Absolutely, man. And I'm happy to call you a friend. Absolutely, sir. Yep. Thank Absolutely. You. Thank you, George. Coach Greg Adams, known for the free agent lifestyle at the 21 Summit. This is George Bruno.